Slab crappie can be fickle and finicky. Let's join John for deadly winter jigging strategies you can use to lure them in and make them strike. Man, that guy, he stared at it a long time. Just a question of finding what he wanted. And I think one of the biggest things about crappie fishing is figuring out what they want. Because crappies, in my opinion, are one of the finny. Oh, look at this one. What an awesome crop. Look at that one. That's a giant. Man, that is an awesome fish right there. But one of the trickiest things to catching crappies, especially big crappies like that, because you know what, he's seen a lot of lures over his years, I guarantee it. I'm not fishing, you know, private water here. I'm fishing public water that anybody can fish, and he has seen a lot of jigs to get this big, or a lot of spoons, or a lot of baits. But it's understanding what trips a crappie like that's trigger, what makes him want to bite on any given day, and what do you got to do to make him bite? And a lot of times with crappies, that's cadence. And what I mean by that is how aggressive are you jigging? Are you bouncing it really, really hard? Are you barely moving it? Are you just holding it still? Is it a soft little bounce? There's a lot of different things that go into this. And I think crappies, when it really comes down to it, are the finicky of, finickiest of finicky. I mean, they, they really aren't going to bite something just to bite it. It's not like a walleye or a pike or a bass that so often bites on a reaction. Crappies don't bite on reaction like that. Crappies bite more, especially ice fishing, based on feeding. There's not a lot of reaction bites. So ultimately, it's really important to work through a whole set of cadences when you're crappie fishing and you've got them on your screen until you figure out what it is that they really want. Ooh, here he comes. He's going to bite it coming hot right on it there he is got him that is so cool when you can recognize a fish getting hot like that and that's what happened there that fish got hot he came up he kind of meandered around for a second but when he got hot it was obvious that it was going to happen it's another good crop feels like a good one anyway but man when they come up like that and get hot like that another awesome fish look at that we're on a pile of good ones this morning just a good 11 12 inch fish but here's the thing the other thing that I think is so important when it comes to crappie fishing is understanding how they're feeding and how they're reacting in the water column. And what I mean is where in the water column they are. You know, I talk about, about how to work that jig and I talk about cadence, but you also have to know where you want to be in the water column. And unlike a lot of fish, and that's a great fish right there, man. Unlike a lot of fish though, that feed pretty much primarily in a certain area of the water column. Bluegills are a great example. For the most part, bluegills want to stay tighter to the bottom. A lot of that is just be their nature. You know, they're used to being chased. Crappies, as they get a little bit bigger, they get more and more willing to be suspended. Small crappies will be suspended too. They're more willing to feed higher up in the column. But one of the things you got to recognize is where they're at on a given day. Today, I'll tell you, for some reason, they've started out pretty tight to the bottom. So what I've been doing is fishing just a couple feet off the bottom, sometimes only a foot. But as soon as I see a fish starting to get aggressive, then I'm just moving up a little bit to try to keep them coming. The other thing to remember is crappies, for the most part, like to feed in an upward direction. You know, there are species out there that you can bottom pound and get them to go down and grab it down in the bottom. Crappies aren't normally like that. Usually you want to be up above crappies and you want to give them enough separation when you're above them to try to get them to charge you. If you can get them to charge you, nine times out of 10, they're going to eat it. I like fishing high, no matter what the species, because I like getting a fish to move. And if they're moving in an upward direction, they're usually going to finish the deal. Here it comes, it's gonna hit it now. It finally got hot. Look at that, up and down, up and down, up and down. Finally got him hot. <laughs> you know, that's that's the thing. You gotta stick with them. You, get, you gotta have the patience to stick with them. If you'll do that, you'll get them to, you'll get them to finish it. I just pulled that tight. I've been able to get most of these fish up without a problem with the transducer, but I got that one out of my way just because I saw them moving it a little bit. Look at that one, another big crop. Man. 
I'll tell you, just sticking with that fish did the deal. If I wouldn't have just stuck with that fish like that, I never would have got him. That was a lot of work. A lot of time went into catching that fish, but I'll tell you what, it's, it's awesome. The reward, if you're, if you're willing to have that patience and keep working them. Another great fish. Let me, let me show you what I'm using here. There's a couple different ways I fish crappies. Okay, number one, and this is probably the most traditional way that, that most people out there are fishing crappies, just a simple tungsten jig. This is a Lindy tungsten toad. This is the size 10. When I'm fishing crappies, I tend to use the size 10. It's a little bit bigger hook and gives me a little bit wider gap because they've got a little bit bigger mouth. If I was fishing bluegills, I might be fishing the 12 or the 14. But for crappies, that tungsten toad right there, I'm usually fishing the size 10. Another way to go is a small spoon. You know, this is a little 16th ounce quiver spoon or, or maybe a Lindy Frosty jig in the, in the 30 seconds or 16th ounce size. But it, you know, you just have those types of scenarios set up couple rods ready to go, you know, something with a small jig that you could put wax worms, larva, anything like that on, and then something like that right there, a spoon set up. And you're going to be pretty good every single day crappie fishing because ultimately they're going to hit one of those two presentations pretty consistently every time you go. Two of them right on it, got them. That's what it takes a lot of times. You know what I did there? I just dropped down below this fish. I went back down lower and what it did was it grabbed the attention of another one that was down on the bottom and he came up and joined this guy and as soon as he did that and there was competition, that was it, game over. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> man, what a morning of crappie fishing this has been. Some of these tricks, man, they're, they're so simple. It's an easy little deal and if you just go through some of these progressions we've gone through this morning and Man, we've done this fast. I mean, this has been a lot of fun. It's just a question of getting them dialed in and, and man, going through some of these tricks, crappy tricks. <laughs> That's an awesome morning right there.